G'day folks, welcome to Snags Lap Ep 5. Now, I thought I'd run through a few stats here in wonderful Port Douglas, just to let you know where we're up to in regard to costs and, and things along those lines. Now, I am 6,280 kilometres into a 20,899 kilometre journey. So, close enough for jazz, let's say I'm a third of the way through. Uh, I have used... Uh, 1,492 litres of fuel, and that has cost me 2,388 bucks. Steady fuel, uh, fuel cost rises. Um, I'm sure we're all aware of that. Uh, fortunately, Cicero is pretty uh, conservative in regard to fuel use, and I have used 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres, and my spend has been about 125 bucks a day. So I've tried to stick to that. Sometimes you come in less than that. Sometimes you come in a whole heap more, but uh, I try to keep it to about 125. Fuel's the main expense. Uh, like a campsite like this, I can get for about 40 bucks with power. Uh, so that's pretty good. It averages between about 30 and 50, depending on how flash. It is school holidays right now. So you'll see sky, uh, prices skyrocket. A bit of free camping now and then to bring the quids back, but about 125 bucks a day. I'd like to get that down to 100, but I did give myself 10 days at Early Beach in a flesh joint, so I have to own up. I did uh, go a bit soft there. So look, there, there's a few stats. Uh, let's have a chat about uh, some things I've learned along the way. So, things I've learned so far. You can't go on a trip like this and not learn something. There'd be something wrong with you. And I've learned a bunch of things. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Um, one thing I've learned is that you should never kick a possum. Um, they're such benign creatures and so cuddly. Until one's knocking off your food at your campsite and you get sick of it and you go to foot him in the ring piece and he becomes a snarling sabre-toothed possum. That was a mistake. I'm never going to molest a marsupial again. Another thing I've learned, there's no such thing as waterproof. Don't talk about waterproof. Now, I've learned that even submarines are not waterproof. And trust me, when you read the waterproof sign, it should say, yeah, sometimes, I've been wet, really wet. Everything's been wet. Fortunately, most of the time it's been warm weather, but five days in a wet tent with a wet sleeping bag can test a soul. So I'm glad I'm a as everyone knows, kind of zen, easy going. They call me easy going, Greg. Yeah. Uh, further to that, um, listen to flood warnings. Now, uh, only an idiot would find himself in a you know meter of water after everybody's told him not to go that way, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that that'd be an idiot? I'll leave it at that. Uh, now, people in caravan parks like a chat. I don't mind a chat. People know I've got a reasonable transmitter. Receiver's not as good. But I do like to keep to myself, and people like a chat. Now, some of those can be somewhat wearing, but I've tried to be open-minded about that, and I'm finding that you get some little pearls of stories, and you meet some really cool people. So I've tried not to be such a turd, um, I don't know how I've gone with that, uh, but I have met some nice people. I've had a heap of fun. Uh, pragmatic, don't go past your fuel range light. Um, even though I've been on the East Coast, and let's face it, it's pretty cushy on the East Coast. It's going to get a lot harder shortly. But um, yeah, fuel can get interesting. It gets if you find yourself getting into the evening, and you will, whether you decide not to or not. You know, you know, you don't want to travel at night. And travelling at night's got whiskers, but you'll find yourself out there at the wrong time. It's easy to pull something up. Uh, don't go past your fuel range light. As soon as you see it, bang, fill them up. So every chance you get to fill up, don't wait till you're empty. That's a really good tip, I reckon. Um, service station pies haven't improved. Um, maybe it's because it's about the first one I've had sober. So, service station pies. Uh, now, 
here comes the bobcat again. That's what you want, isn't it, when you're filming the bloke with the bobcat? Uh, anyway, look, I'm about to head west towards Mount Isa, the murder capital of the world. Before that bobcat gets here, which is any second now, I'll sign off. See you, F6. Coal-fired power station here at Gladstone. Eerily quiet. Stacks and stacks of coal going out on bogies though, and I think that's export. Be sure that's export from the deep water port that Gladstone is. Very industrial. There's industry everywhere here, but what I do note is that the marina precinct and that area is beautifully manicured and spotless. Nice places to eat. Um, uh, plenty of uh, places for kids to play and it's made obvious that that's been financed by the coal exporters so they clearly have thrown a, a lot of money into the area in regard to making recreational areas available uh, I make no comment on that other than I note it because I have no clue as to the politics of, of that whole situation. Other than to say, you come through this mangrovey swamp area to uh, uh, recreational boats and lovely manicured area where people are enjoying their lives. Oh, it's a Saturday afternoon and it really is incongruously rubbing up against massive industry that's all coal over there i hope you might get a look that's coal and it's a lot of coal and it just goes on and on and on that's just that's a very small percentage of it. of course there's the electricity wires there and there so you get this kind of ugly uh techno background I actually don't find it that ugly. I actually find it quite attractive, but I, I'd much rather walk around it. I'd rather walk around a city dump than a forest, but that might just be me. Um, I find that stuff immensely interesting, but I get that it's not pretty, uh, and I just wonder how Gladstone copes with the difference. I don't know, I got my make no judgment whatsoever other than to say it's really got me interested to go home and read the history of Gladstone and its demography and where it sits today with that coal-fired station clearly quiet. Very interesting, really, really interesting Saturday Arvo. Cane cutting, as you can see it's a lot more automated than the horrible hard job it used to be when men would stand out in steaming temperatures with a, a huge dangerous blade um, they breed them pretty tough up here and it's just getting into the cutting season now sugar is such an important part of what happens here in uh, North Queensland and moving into far North Queensland and uh, yeah the gents are out having a look. Uh, they'll probably want to know what the hell I'm doing here shortly. But yeah, cane cutting just outside Ingham, Queensland. Just thought I'd give you a bit of a look. That automation is pretty cool. It seems to throw the pulp above and away from the truck. Um, these guys are making it look easy. I'm sure it's not. Jesus, that's beautiful. Ak Tong Crocodiles Keep away from your water's edge Do not enter the water Take extreme care when launching and retrieving boats Do not clean fish or leave fish waste near the water's edge Camp well away from the water Alright, well, let's go and have a look Let's see if we can entice What do you think? You reckon a croc would like a You know, a uh, old snag A well-aged snag this is the Moonga Creek and it's probably, I mean, I don't know shit about shit, but it looks like crocodiles that live here to me. Um, 
there's big lizards all over the joint and stuff jumping around in the in the uh, bits and pieces here in the mangroves and it smells like f f shit but look look at the things that run around there's just crabs and stuff running around if you have a close look they're just always bolting around nature just comes back when you're not looking doesn't really give a shit about you and I reckon there'd be a real good chance of a croc in there a really good chance so this will be close enough for me because as a born and bred Melbourne city boy uh, I'm just looking for tracks it's a little like a crocodile track to you what's a crocodile track look like anyway there you go starting to hit the real tropics uh, it's really steamy and hot um, it's different and I really love the feel of it I remember it from a couple of times when I was a young bloke I backpacked up here my wife and myself backpacked up here before children one of the things we did uh, which is really great one of my greatest and fondest memories um, of my beautiful girl uh, and you just the smells and sights and the laconic manner of the place comes back you know it's it's nice anyway enough waxing lyrical I reckon a crocs what's that there Jesus Christ right -o, see ya I wish the bloke wasn't fucking now mowing no bobcat I'll do this again